Hey everyone, so um, I want to go over some slides with you involving cell transport. We are not going to explicitly use this in our um, project, but it is an important topic and something to think about uh, when it comes to the cell and how the cell works. So cell transport it's all about how things get in and out of the cell, specifically through the cell membrane. And if you're talking about plant cells, it also has to go through the cell wall. And one thing to keep in mind is that the universe is always in this random motion. Um, molecules are always moving, whether they're super fast or super slow, um, but they're constantly moving. And they are in three different states, usually um, gas, liquid, or solid. There is a, uh, There are other states, but these are the basic ones. And something to keep in mind is as we increase, that's what this up arrow means, as we increase um, temperature, there's an increase in movement. So there are certain factors that actually play a role in whether... Um, cell uh, um, transport or movement of molecules happens at a faster or a slower rate. So something to keep in mind is this. The universe moves from high to low concentration, which means this. If you have perfume and you spray it in one area of the room, that area is going to smell very strong. Over time, the entire room will smell like the perfume, but it's going to take a long time. So what happens is that when you immediately spray the perfume, that's what we call high concentration. Concentration is just the number of molecules in a space. So when you spray perfume, that's the high concentration. The molecules all on their own, just the way the universe moves, they're going to move to low concentration, which would be um, spread out all around the room. This is why it takes people a minute to smell something um even though like you know someone from across the room may smell the perfume or they may smell um you know something else like uh like a food that's being opened um and it may take people from the other side of the room to notice it um you know it may take them a little while to notice it so everything moves from high concentration to low concentration the more um, spray you have then the faster you're going to smell it so if you only spray um, use the spray once, then it's probably going to take a longer time for people to smell it. And we use this abbreviation CG to represent something called the concentration gradient, which basically is this idea that the molecules move from high concentration to low concentration, and the gradient is this difference. And the molecules are in constant motion and the purpose is because they want to find and maintain an equal concentration inside of a space as they do outside of a space. And the space generally is, you know, defined by some sort of barrier. However, okay, it can be just a general space like a room. So if you spray the perfume in the corner of the room, then eventually all the molecules are going to spread out everywhere and they're going to be equally distributed. We call this distribution equilibrium, and we use this symbol, the three lines in an M, to represent equilibrium. Equilibrium has the word equal in it, and the idea is this, that the molecules are going to continue to move until they are evenly distributed around the entire room, even if that means that we don't smell the perfume that strongly because um, it has spread out so much. And when things move um, just all on their own, naturally, we don't really do anything, um, we call this diffusion. So if you spray perfume by my desk, it's going to take a couple minutes for you to smell it all the way across the room by the bookcase. Um, but over time, the molecules are going to move and they're going to diffuse and then we'll be able to smell the perfume across the room. Okay. So let's talk about osmosis. So osmosis is a specific kind of cell transport. It has to do with water. 
water specifically across a cell membrane, which is why the M is underlined. So if we look at if we look at this picture below, you can see that we have this tube. And this line right here represents kind of like a barrier. It lets some things across, but not everything. So these dots represent some sort of material. Let's just say it's sugar. Well, the sugar molecules are too big to go across the barrier, but water is a small enough molecule that you can move it across. So if we look at just the left side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six molecules. That's not a lot of molecules for the amount of water we have. However, on the right side, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Almost, you know, more than double the amount of molecules. So this side on the right is going to have what we call a higher concentration of molecules than the left side. So what happens is that the water is going to move so that it allows for... Um, the, the right side, right, to have more water. And what it does is it, it kind of evenly distributes the ratio of water to molecules. So now if you look in the right picture, we still have the same number of molecules. However, we have less water. So more water kind of goes hand in hand with more molecules. And that makes sense. So think of it as if you're drinking a glass of lemonade. You poured a little bit of lemonade here, but you poured a lot of lemonade over here. You're going to need more water in order to make the lemonade taste good. Overall, a cell wants to be in equilibrium. Again, that's what this symbol is, three lines in an M. And each side is eventually going to have what we call equal concentration. As long as you have this barrier that lets some things through, you're going to have movement. And specifically, since the water is what's moved, we call this osmosis. So permeability is this ability for some things to go through a membrane. So it's the ability of molecules to go through the membrane. And this weird little symbol means according to. So the ability of molecules to go through a membrane according to something. So membranes, like your cell membrane, only let some things through. Can't let everything through or else we would probably not be doing so hot. So what, what causes the cell membrane to block certain things yet let other, others through? First thing is a molecule shape. Some molecules just aren't shaped correctly or they're too big. It's just not going to let them through. And that has, has to do with size. All right. If a molecule is just way too big, it's not going to be able to squeeze through your tiny microscopic membrane. So for example, okay, um, if you have salt, you could pour salt on your skin. If you dissolve salt in water, it's not really going to go through your skin. So selective permeability is this idea that certain barriers, like your membrane, will let some molecules through, but not others. All right, passive transport is when you have movement across a cell, and it's passive. It doesn't really require any energy. It just happens all on its own. It doesn't require any energy. That's what this symbol is. Remember, this sigma means energy. And two different types of passive transport are osmosis and diffusion. Osmosis is the movement of water. Diffusion is when you just have other molecules moving across a membrane. Or you can have molecules moving through like the air, like perfume. And what happens is that the passive transport just happens with, it just moves with what we call the concentration gradient. So 
passive transport relies on just the universe and its 